Hey guys, and welcome back to Season 1 of Settlers, the series where we build settlements throughout the world of Conan Exiles. Today is episode 8, and we're building a cliffside house for a reclusive member of the village, alongside finding some more clues about Levan the Carpenter's disappearance. As usual, no mods are included in this build, so let's get started. Firstly, we're starting off with, of course, the base plate. You can see the blueprint on screen now and we're going for a really simple design that will lend itself very nicely to the overall aesthetic of this house. You'll notice that the outside walkway shown on the blueprint on the right side isn't there yet, but I'll be building that shortly. I of course used stable fence foundations and covered them with Namidian ceilings. Next for the ground floor walls. I separated the build into two rooms, an entrance hall and a lounge. I built the walls two tiles high, including smaller frames sparingly around the build, and I also included some of the larger frames on the bay window looking east from the cliff. Next for the walkway around the southern side of the build. I used Namidian ceilings to build this walkway, and I then used the corner pillar trick I used a couple of videos ago to place pillars in the corner of ceiling tiles, giving visual support to the walkway and giving it a bit more of a sort of framework look. I also built the corner pillars up two tiles high to support an overhang on the first floor later on, and between the construction and furnishing phase I would add extra pillars on the bottom side of this walkway between the corner pillars. Once I'd finished the walkway and built stairs in the entrance hall, I then capped off the ground floor walls using vaulted Namidian ceilings to create the traversable area of the first floor. I just followed the flow of the rooms below, making this a very easy task. Once I'd done that, I grabbed some of the single tile Namidian vaulted pieces to cover the top of the walkway. Now of course I could have done this with roof pieces, awnings or regular ceiling pieces, but I don't really get a chance to use these vaulted pieces much, and they work quite nicely. Next for the first floor walls. After I fenced off the edges of the balcony, I then began to build the walls as I did throughout the rest of the village. I used slope sides to transition smoothly from Namidian to frontier pieces. I built the walls on this floor two tiles high again, including a slight rise over the staircase just to give enough headroom. I did adjust the initial design here, choosing to instead not split the balcony on either side, and to instead create a surrounding balcony, and you will see that adjustment shortly. It was definitely a change for the better that makes this floor flow much, much better. Once I finished off the walls, I then quickly built some roof gables on either end of the roof, including some gables in the centre of the roof on the longer side for details. Next to the roof itself. I of course stuck with Namidian roofing, and I created a pretty simple open gable roof, capped off with rooftop pieces. I also used wedge roof pieces to cover the bay window below, and I chose to include some of the shorter, spiked, intersecting rooftop pieces atop the roof. Once I'd finished placing the roof pieces themselves, I added some frontier wall caps to the roof for extra aesthetic details. Once the roof was complete, I then added awnings around the balcony on the first floor, and the construction phase was complete. Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching the house, I've used fences and palisade walls to create an exterior yard surrounded by warning signs and bear traps.
This build is the home of Armin, a reclusive ex-bandit whose time ravaging and reaving has left him shunned by the village below. He was a member of a bandit group named the Serpents, and though their flag still flies within his home, his days of plundering are officially over. Inside his home, you can still see plenty of relics from his time as a bandit. He has collected many cultural artifacts over the years, and his weapons always remain sharpened and in perfect condition, though his time away from the Serpents has definitely given him a chance to indulge in some of the more simple pleasures of life, taking up masonry to carve smaller statues, for example. Armin recently ordered a replacement bow from Levan the Carpenter. You may remember it from the note found in Levan's home, but it seems he has never actually received the bow. The house itself inside is comfortable, if slightly cramped. Armin is definitely quite happy with his home comforts and cares little for wandering into town. He never really attends town meetings or visits the tavern, and only really has contact with traders like Boran, Levan and Merelda when absolutely necessary for his own survival and convenience. His standoffish attitude, which of course came by virtue of him being a bandit in the past, has definitely helped to reinforce his reclusive nature. However, Armin is perfectly happy with that, and he's content to live his life up here on the cliff above Skylake Village. Though Armin isn't concerned with drama in the village, Boran might be closing in on what happened to Levan. On a tall cliff west of Armin's home, another disused campsite has been spotted, looking over the path from the western side of the village to Armin. This camp seems to have been thrown up quickly and abandoned even quicker. The campfire seems to be older than the one previously found near Leonard the Hunter's home, and unfortunately Boran has found signs of a struggle. Taking his blacksmith apprentice with him, Boran has stumbled upon some clues. Just around the corner from that camp on the cliff, next to a sheer drop into the valley below, lays a bear trap that appears to contain scraps of cloth and, worryingly, is spattered with blood. There also appears to be at least four different sets of footprints and drag marks leading away from the bear trap. The trap does seem to have been reset though after it was triggered. Laying right next to the trap is a beech bow with blackened iron reinforcements, the exact bow Armin had ordered for himself. There's no sign of wear on the bow or any of the arrows found nearby, indicating that Levan likely didn't have chance to fire it. However, that being said, the bow is damp to the touch, indicating it has soaked up some amount of water and has likely laid here for at least a few days. And there we have it, Armin the Recluse's home on a cliff high above Skylake Village. Thanks for watching, I think this build might just be the last major one within Skylake Village. Next episode, we'll take a final look across the entire settlement, from its inception to its finished state, and I think we'll finally work out what has happened to Levan. If you enjoy my content, all the links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Host Havoc affiliate page, NordVPN discount and NordPass discount are available in the description below. 
However, of course, you can simply just leave a like, a comment, or subscribe. Any of those are very greatly appreciated. Patrons get a bunch of nice benefits, including sneak peeks of videos, your name in every video, custom-made wallpapers in 1080p and 4K resolutions, full-size build blueprints, Discord roles, and more. On that note, a massive thanks to our patrons Sadialot, Randar, Connor, Ivy, Torn, Ill-Fated, CoffeeMan04, Marion Ladd, Alfric, and Eagle Rose. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.